Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On Point EDC. We have another great knife for you today from Kaiser Knives. A little bit about the brand. Kaiser was founded in 2012. They produce knives that are made in China, but are of an extremely high quality. Their market segment, if I was to wrap it in a nutshell, I'd say they produce high-end knives at mid-range prices. So there's definitely a lot of uh, bang per buck there um, and a great value proposal. Now for the type of knife, if I was to classify this, I'd you know, uh, class it under the modern titanium frame lock folding knife. Um, some key characteristics are going to be you know, that Chris Reeves style integral lock, um, which is just an evolution of the Walker liner lock. It's going to have a titanium handle, an integrated frame lock, which essentially just means that the locking bar is going to be a part of the actual um, handle scale itself versus kind of being a liner that's going to be sandwiched in the middle. So if you couldn't tell already, this is the Kaiser Gemini. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And before we take a closer look, let's do the mandatory wristwatch check. We have the SRP Turtle still on the wrist on this um, great new strap code uh, Super Jubilee, which is really nice. And I've updated the clasp to from that kind of standard clasp that comes with it from strap code to a ratcheting clasp from the Marine Master 300. So really nice, great piece. Um, I gotta say the um, the the fact that the bracelet tapers more is definitely huge for me and i really like it and it's kind of kept this piece on my wrist more than quite a few of my other blue divers and if you guys are fans of the channel you know i have a lot of those um so keep an eye out for the bracelet review um for the you know ever popular turtle reissue but let's go ahead and take a closer look at the kaiser gemini so the Gemini is basically a production spinoff of the Ray Laconico designed Jasmine custom knife, um, you know, which is a great looking knife as is. But I mean, to me, honestly, I feel like um, the base Jasmine and anyway, I mean, there's definitely some uh, very cool customized versions, but base Gemini versus the base Jasmine, I think the Gemini looks um, a little bit better to me. And as you can see, this one has actually been updated and upgraded with the milled pocket clip, um, which you can get um, directly through Kaiser Knives and I believe also um, Caramel Cutlery um, sells them as well. So, um, this is just, I, I gotta say, I've been meaning to do a review of this knife for a while, just haven't got around to it. I love the action on this knife. I love the fit and finish. I gotta say, you know, I was a little bit skeptical on this knife just from, you know, the amount of great reviews it had, you know, that it was gonna live up to the hype or not. And I have to say that it definitely does. Um, this is one of my favorite knives um, to look at, to carry. I mean, just to kind of uh, even just have this a part of my collection. I just really, really enjoy this particular knife. So, um, you know, the retail price on the Kaiser Gemini is, is about $200, but the street price is about uh, $170. So, you, you know, there is a decent discount that's on these now. So, definitely keep an eye out. Various retailers have these, and they're just, I got to say, they're worth every penny um, at, you know, just underneath $200. I should say comfortably underneath $200. So, um, this is using, you know, very, just very popular right now, especially with knives that are made overseas, <laughs> um, which is kind of funny because it's a U.S. Uh, based crucible steel, um, which is the S35VN. It's a premium stainless steel, really, really great blade steel. You know, it's, it's a favorite among you know many uh, knife lovers that are out there just because it's a really balanced metal it's not something that's going to sacrifice you know edge retention for uh for rock wool hardness or durability or you know um corrosion resistance this is just kind of all across the board 
um, you're going to be seeing fours and fives basically. Um, this isn't one that's going to, you know, really excel in one thing and fall short in another. This is just a really well rounded blade steel. Um, and it's US uh, produced, which is really great. This has a drop point blade, as you can see. And it has a nice full flat ground um, edge there, and um, which is great because it makes it a very nice slicer. Uh, I mean, just the shape there it does remind me a lot of, if it had a spidey hole, I feel like this would almost be like a little mini uh, flipping version, kind of like the sleaze buoy. Um, I just, uh, I love spider clothes and this, and, and this particular blade shape um, really kind of reminds me of uh, spider co, which is pretty nice. So the handle is titanium and it's bead blasted to this um, very dark kind of gunmetal finish, which I think looks really great. Um, as far as the dimensions go, those were listed in the beginning of the video, but one thing I will touch back on is the weight, and this comes in at just a little bit over 3.5 ounces at uh, 3.65 ounces, and I gotta say, it's a really nicely balanced knife. Um, it's not heavy, it's not, you know, lightweight um, by any means, but I think it's just uh, the right weight for what it is. Um, and it's not, you know, a super petite knife. This has a lot of presence, um, you know, in the hand and it doesn't feel like um, you're, you would ever need to necessarily reach for a larger knife. Uh, I think it, the amount of cutting edge it has and the, you know, blade to handle ratio is just uh, dialed in extremely well and, uh, you know, big praise to Ray Laconico for coming out with a design that's just so simple um, and so sleek that, it, you know, um, you bring over a, uh, a manufacturer and they're able to produce this at this quality is, is just pretty outstanding. So in hand, you know, it has really nice ergonomics. It doesn't have any jimping or anything like that, but you know, it really doesn't need it. It's just so well designed that your hand can just lock right into there. Um, it feels almost like um, a skipping stone in hand just because the, uh, the titanium handles are contoured really nicely, as you can see. They're nice and rounded off. It's not like they use just a couple of flat slabs of titanium and then beveled off the edges. Um, there's just a lot more work that goes into this and it's one of the things that makes the price um, really so amazing and so impressive uh, as far as what they're able to accomplish. I mean, this is just, uh, for me, this is a knife of the year competitor. Uh, I gotta say for 2016, really, 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 really like this knife. So, um, as far as action goes, it does have ceramic ball bearing pivot, um, so of course it's going to be ultra smooth, you know, opening action, very nice and snappy, perfect detent, you know, for that satisfying flip that you have there. It's not too harsh um, to where you're going to be breaking your finger off trying to get it to flip. Um, but it's not so soft to where you're going to have to try really hard and, and you know, try to flip it perfectly to make sure that it's actually going to deploy and you know the flipper is really nicely designed the tab there it's not huge it's not small i think it's just exactly the the size and shape that it needs to be to tie into this amazing flipping action and the crack just the way it opens really really nice extremely satisfying and then of course it does work uh light switch as well as push button. Uh, of course, light switch is gonna be a little bit, um, you know, a little more confidence um, inspiring, um, but it does work uh, as with push button deployment if you'd like. Um, so as far as in pocket, you know, it lays very flat, which is nice. Um, it doesn't have a huge footprint or anything like that. Uh, it rides relatively deep in the pocket. There's not that much that's really going to be hanging out as far as material goes. And the part that does hang out is good looking. I mean, this is a very handsome and finely executed knife. I mean, just look at that back spacer there. Just the, the, the tolerance is nice and tight. Everything is just 
so outstandingly done. I mean, I'm just, you can't help but be impressed when you have this knife in hand. So um, in pocket feels great. And it's really nice to know that you have something that's really kind of a mid tech level, um, you know, and it's just, the, you know, at a killer price and, you know, great US designer and, and Ray Laconico. Um, and then you, you have, you know, Kaiser knives, you know, that's actually able to produce mass produce, you know, something like this is just really, uh, what a great time for knives. <laughs> um, even though it's made in China, which might throw a lot of people off, you know, a lot of people probably felt that way about, um, knives that are made in Taiwan. And now, you know, um, uh, the big, um, uh, knife builders like uh, Spyderco have definitely proved that kind of idea and way of thinking wrong because you know their best knives come out of their uh, Taichung factory out in Taiwan. So speaking of Spyderco, let's go ahead and compare size wise. I'd say it's uh, pretty close to the Domino. Um, the footprint is very similar. Of course the Domino is going to have a slightly larger um, handle which is going to mean that when it's in your pocket it is going to you know that that is going to feel like a larger knife um than the gemini uh so it, as you can see this one i've you know i've swapped out uh some of uh, the hardware for some burnt titanium as well as um switched out the pocket clip for a nice uh, low riding clip there uh, so this is going to sit uh, a little bit deeper than, you know, from the factory, but um, definitely I'd say it's very comparable as far as, you know, if, if you like the size, you know, if the Domino is the knife size that you really enjoy, I think um, you can really get a lot of enjoyment out of the Gemini. So, and then as far as flipping action goes, you know, there's going to be comparisons here uh, to the king uh, right now of production flippers, uh, which would be, you know, the Zero Tolerance 0450. And this is particular one has also been modded out a little bit. Carbon fiber side scale. Um, we got the milled pocket clip there and then some, you know, titanium uh, standoffs with a nice blue tint to them. So... But as far as that kind of legendary opening, I mean, that action, it's like a shotgun going off. It just, it kicks and it's just going to open every time. It's just not going to fail. So really great, satisfying open. And I got to say the Gemini, it's up there. You know, I don't, I think it's hard for me to say one is better than the other um, because it's it's I feel like it's subjective, um, but man, this thing is just really really nice. I gotta say, I'm big fan, big fan. Um, you know, similar footprint I'd say uh, width wise, um, but you know, although the zero tolerance is really finely finished, it's you know it's essentially just a flat piece of titanium that's been beveled on the edges right versus here this is you know truly contoured piece you know um that's been rounded and just that just uh takes a lot a lot more work and i gotta say they pulled it off really nicely so um now talking about milled uh, titanium uh, a great example of that would be right here in the Lion Steel TRE. Great knife. I feel like it's a little bit small, um, but I mean, it's definitely a great everyday carry, almost kind of a modern gentleman's knife at um, this size. Uh, I just wish they would have made it in the size of the Gemini, and I feel like the Gemini kind of fills that um, gap for me. Um, as far as you know what I like to carry if I want to carry this a larger version of it bam so if you've kind of been you know holding off on picking up a TRE um, I know that they do have the I think the Kerr that's coming out uh, or is already out that's basically 
um, a larger, but it's a little bit too large, I feel like. Um, there's not a nice middle ground. I feel like the Gemini kind of uh, does that. And then if the Gemini is just not exciting enough for you as far as design goes and that blade, maybe it's just a little bit too dull. Maybe you're just not a big fan of the full flat grind. I don't know. Um, the cool thing is that Kaiser released the Ursa Minor, which is very similar. Basically uses the same handle um, with just a new blade. And then the, since the new blade's a bit thicker, it means that um, it's also this backspacer is a little bit thicker to kind of accommodate, uh, which makes for a slightly larger, more substantial filling knife. But one of the cool things is that because of that heavier blade now, those ball bearings, they get put to use um, amazingly when you just feel the closing action on that knife. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily better um, of a knife than the Gemini because I'm just, you know, I, I feel like when I have one in hand, it's my favorite, then I swap back, you know, and then now I'll, you know, I'll pick up the Ursa Minor and be like, no, this one's better. <laughs> um, so it's just one of those situations where they're just both really great knives. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of get these uh, out of frame here. Just keep the Kaisers around. Um, so as you can see, these are just really two great great options let's zoom in a little bit closer for kind of closing thoughts here um i gotta say you know i'm a huge fan of the gemini when the ursa minor was kind of first announced um i wasn't crazy about it you know um i was really already satisfied i the only thing that i kind of liked um was the milled uh, pocket clip which was great because i was actually able to just uh call up um, well, i didn't call but i messaged them on facebook i just messaged kaiser knives and they sent me out um the milled pocket clip uh no questions asked which was great um but you know there was just something about the ursa miners blade that just um it just added for me a little bit more of that kind of visual interest and you know what it is i think um on the lock side, it just seems like a more cohesive design, but um, I guess if you go to the show scale side, I feel like when you look at it that way is that's where the Gemini really shines. I think on t this side of the, you know, of the handle, it just flows even better. Um, and it just has that really nice cohesive design. And it's just something, it's it's a great knife. And, you know, if you are, you know, um, a collector of Spyderco knives and, you know, you're looking to venture out a bit, I think the Gemini's definitely, you know, could be the piece for you. Or, you know, maybe you're a big Zero Tolerance fan and you love their flippers. They do make really outstanding production flippers. Um, I'd say, you know, the Kaiser Gemini is also a great option for you. I do plan on doing kind of a battle of the um, production flippers video soon so you'll see you know these two kind of representing uh kaiser uh going against you know the uh tre from lion steel the um i guess probably the mantra um it's more similarly sized um from spider co and then the 0450 from zero tolerance so definitely keep an eye out for that kind of face-off video um, kind of knife battle um, but until then I'd say you know definitely check out these two knives I, I would not be at all surprised if these guys came out on top um, in that comparison just because they do combine you know a lot of value as far as pricing goes material fit and finish I mean just across the board these are just outstanding uh, knives, um, even apart from price. And then you throw price in there and it just takes it up a notch. So with that said, if you liked the video, please hit like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.